Hello folks, we are here recording at my house in beautiful Savannah, and uh, we're going to be going over the Pro Services installation and checkout procedure. The hardware setup is the same thing as the free version, so we're going to kick you back to that video shortly. Just wanted to add a couple items for you. If you are trying to perform in-person transactions without transference of any germs, reminder, this is a contactless reader. You are able to use contactless RFID chips. You're also to, able to use Google Pay, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay just by hovering over the device. Uh, additionally, we've tried to make some of these uh, devices mobile by including a mobile battery you can buy on Amazon. You can read it on, about it on our uh, blog. There's also some information uh, elsewhere on our website and our storefront. Uh, this one is made by Talent Cell. It's a 12 volt battery uh, that you can charge at home using a basic, um, you know, AC uh, DC uh, barrel. Uh, adapter and um, it is a direct current uh, DC 12 volt battery. Um, so these devices are powered by 5 to 12 volt DC. So you can use a 5 volt, you can use a 12 volt. Um, if you've got yourself a mobile phone battery, you can use that too. Just doesn't last as long. Um, in any case, uh, that'll that, that'll be one way for you to be able to make this more mobile and use a hotspot as well. Um, we'll go through the installation procedure for the standard setup. Um, excluding this particular solution shortly and um, hope you enjoy our pro version and remember you have one hour of free installation support you can leverage um, with any pro services uh, plugin um, licensing that's the monthly and, and yearly or whatever uh, opportunities we have available to you whatever offers we have available to you on the store um, make sure that you take advantage of those anyway good luck and I hope you enjoy this Hello YouTubers, today we are really excited to go through the installation and configuration procedure for the terminal for Stripe and WooCommerce plugin that we've created. And uh, if you've gone ahead and purchased your terminal directly from the Stripe.com website, you are ready to go. Otherwise, if you've purchased it directly through Verifone or a separate contractor or vendor, uh, you're going to have to go ahead and install the Stripe terminal software directly onto that device. That will be handled in a separate video. Um, but if you've purchased it directly from Stripe.com, you're ready to go. We'll dive right in right after this intro. Welcome back. So when you first unbox the reader, it'll look something like this. And connecting it is pretty simple. Just take the back off and take your little patch cable, connect it to the back, put the cover right back on. Take your AC adapter, and you're going to put that into the female end of your little dongle right here. This is going to handle your internet connectivity, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Now, right out of the box, your device might not support Wi-Fi. You may be required to download some firmware. When you first connect it, just connect an Ethernet cable to the dongle, power it up, and it'll install the firmware for you. To connect to a Wi-Fi network, you can force the prompt by typing into the reader, zero Wi-Fi. That's zero nine four three four. That'll give you a list of networks to connect to, just like you'll see on any other mobile device. Uh, you'll be used to seeing that uh, from just basic life, I guess, and um, it'll be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, now that you're connected to the internet using Ethernet, uh, your reader's ready to set up, and so we'll get a registration code. Now in the future, um, you can reuse this to connect any other device and not just this only th this one alone and so to do that you're going to enter 07139 now i've already set up a reader for us by plugging it in and connecting to the internet you're going to see this little background right here it's this stripe logo background and you can change that background to be whatever it is that you want uh, within the stripe dashboard just go to stripe.com and you can upload your your own little background there so we're going to hit 07139 and that's going to give us registration code. It's usually a three-word hyphenated sentence. Um, and we're going to leave that open because we're going to go back to this later on in the installation process. So uh, we're going to move on to WordPress, and we'll show you what installation looks like in a clean WordPress site. Make sure to leave the screen open because we'll revisit it. So the first thing to do is to go to our website and hit the Shop Services button. On our storefront, you can hit the Buy Now for our recommended license or View Plans to see your options. Here you'll see the different features available between the free and the pro versions. We'll go ahead and buy the annual subscription. 
In order to advance through checkout, you must register an account. This will allow you to manage license sharing and registration codes. So we're gonna go ahead and fill out a test user here. You'll see a checkout like this with some options for additional paired services in the bottom of the cart. We strongly advise taking advantage of our absurdly inexpensive hosted WordPress support option that you will see down here. Because of the pricing, it is only available for people interested in buying our plugin. We already have a license purchased for you, so I'm gonna go ahead and log out and then log into a different account. Once you're logged in, you're going to hover over the profile icon, and then you're going to go ahead and click the Manage Subscriptions link. Here you can view your purchase subscriptions and see how many licenses you have remaining. Click the Manage Users link to manage those licenses. You can also copy your registration codes and download the packages here. We'll show you how that's done by email as well. We'll start by sharing this license with other users by clicking Share. These users have already been given license access. Since I have some available slots, I'll go ahead and add Jimmy, the cashier, so he can check customers out. He'll get an email from us. So here's the email we're gonna take a look at. And since uh, Jimmy does not have a login, he can copy the registration code and download the package directly from this email. To install it, you'll simply have to unzip using your favorite unzip tool, or you can also click extract all. Just right click and select the unzip options. Once that's done, you're just going to copy the folder into your plugins directory. Now go ahead and log into the WordPress plugins page using the email address that you gave a license to earlier. So in this case, that would be Jimmy. If you already have the free version, the first thing that you're going to need to do when the plugins page loads is to deactivate it. And once that's done, you'll go ahead and then activate the pro version. Now you'll notice this error message, which indicates I do not have a license. That's because I haven't input my registration code yet. Clicking manage users will load the user's control panel so you can verify your logged in user matches the one provided access. So in this case, I'm actually logged in as Johnny and his email address is blurred out there, but he does have a registration code and so does Jimmy. Go ahead and copy the registration code. You can do that by clicking that little button. And now go to settings. You're gonna click the settings for the plugin. And on the settings panel, paste the registration code into the registration code field. That's that second one right there. As you scroll down, you'll notice that we've already ported over some of your data from the free version. We even set up a default location for you. Go ahead and save that. Now once saved, uh, you're gonna see a button there that says refresh. Go ahead and click that. that will complete your activation. Now, again, your existing data is ported in. So if, if that exists from your free version, that is. Um, otherwise, you won't have any readers and you'll have to set them up. By default, you'll have a defaults location, which you can edit by hitting the edit icon and saving. So we'll go ahead and give this a different name.
Now we want to go ahead and add a reader. So we'll go ahead and expand that and click Add Reader. To follow the instructions, same as the free version, simply click Add Reader, enter your registration code. And then after you've entered a registration code, give it a name that you can remember or at least recognize. Now, unlike the free version, you can add unlimited locations and unlimited readers to each location. So after I've added my second reader to my new storefront, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new storefront. So I'll hit that add location button and enter storefront two. We'll go ahead and fill out this form. We do our best to handle validation. So be sure to use a legitimate postal code uh, because as you'll see here, it's not gonna like it if you try to mess around with fake addresses. Let's go ahead and put in a real postal code this time. Okay, now that we've got that added, we wanna add a new reader. So we'll click add a reader. Again, that's 07139 on your reader and then enter the registration string that is returned. And we're gonna call this uh, reader one, Savannah reader one. Okay, so now we have to assign our cashiers to each location. Uh, I'm logged in as Johnny, so we're going to go ahead and edit him. We'll go ahead by clicking that users button and selecting to edit the Johnny Bag of Donuts account. Now, once the page loads, you're going to go ahead and scroll down until you get to the locations drop down right there under Stripe Terminal Location, and we'll sign him to the first location and then click Update Profile. Now we want Jimmy to work at Storefront 2. He's gonna be the cashier or manager there. So we'll go ahead and load up the users page and edit Jimmy. Scroll down and assign him to Storefront 2. And then we'll go ahead and update. Now let's double check that Jimmy has a license because we wanna make sure that he's got access to this. And there he is. Great, so now Jimmy can use readers from Storefront 2 and Johnny from Storefront 1. One great pro feature is the sync customers feature, which you'll see uh, at the bottom of the settings page. This will perform a two-way sync of customer accounts between Stripe and WooCommerce, including legacy users. This may take some time, so be patient. If you do not get an email, which you'll see in this message, fear not, just come back later and you should see the process completed. So go ahead and click OK. And let's go back to Johnny's World Famous Donut Shop. So here we are back at Johnny's World Famous Donut Shop. If anyone has found Johnny's World Famous Donuts, please let him know to give us a shout. And we'll go ahead and give them a free license for all their fake work. In this video, we are focused on the pro services features, so we'll skip over standard product purchases as those are covered in the free version. If you are interested in that, you can find that video on our channel and our website. So Johnny set up this great Donut of the Month Club. It's a subscription. And as subscriptions go, that means I need to have an account to assign the recurring payments to. This is why subscriptions can't be used with guest checkout types uh, in the free version. So. Johnny's gonna be able to click that sign up now button to add the subscription to the cart. And that will initiate the process of buying a subscription. Okay, so now you can see there's a recurring total. It says $5 per month. You'll see that in the subtotal as well. And we'll go ahead and proceed to checkout. Now, just like in the free version, you're gonna see that Johnny Bag of Donuts account information is shown in the checkout billing information. One great new feature in the pro version is the ability to store guest information for product sales. This is not for subscriptions. And while we aren't going through that process, I'll demonstrate it here briefly. If you do not want your customer to create an account, but you'd like to store their information, you may overwrite the data in this form. So we're gonna remove 
Johnny's information and put in a guest customer. And sometimes this is just uh, for marketing information or, you know, just to validate credit cards, um, you know, for banks and so forth. So this will record the data to the order as the customer data without updating the logged in user's data. So this is not a user account. This will also record the customer's data as metadata to the order in Stripe. Again, this does not create or update customer account information on either platform. It just stores the WooCommerce order and then it stores to the Stripe order as metadata, not as a customer. So in a normal subscription workflow, you only need to enter the email address of the registered user. If this is an existing customer, you should have the customer's information imported to your account. So we'll want to quickly ask the customer or we can look it up. There are some other changes in this workflow, which you may notice. So we're going to touch on these real quickly um, and just give us a moment. We'll start jumping into each of those. You'll notice that in spite of setting up three readers, I can only see two. This is because I, Johnny, have been set up to the first location, Storefront 1. Let's go take a look at our users to find Johnny's settings and our new customers that have been imported from Stripe. You'll see that Johnny is an administrator set up to Storefront 1. One of the great new features is the cashier role. Jimmy has been set up to Storefront 2 as a cashier. The cashier role is a more limited role with fewer permissions than shop manager or administrator, but with access to perform checkouts nonetheless. We will stay logged in as Johnny as an administrator. You will also see our new customers which have been imported from Stripe. These are assigned to the customer role. Most of these are dummy users for our example, but you should see first and last name listed in addition to username or email. If you are subscribing a new customer, simply click the add new button atop the page to register a new account or ask them to register on your storefront themselves. In this case, we want to subscribe an existing customer, Jericho Smithsonian. Let's return to the checkout page. Okay, so on the checkout page, scroll to the email address field. We will validate if this is a legitimate user in order to assign the subscription. So be sure that you spell it right. First thing that we're gonna do for the demonstration is insert a fake user. Now we'll go ahead and click that terminal button. And as you will see, the website does not like that. So we'll get rid of that and we'll enter Jericho's email address to get it right this time. While we are here, just a couple quick notes for you. First, let's copy Jericho's email address. Quick note number one is that the WooCommerce subscription plugin is required in order to accomplish WooCommerce subscriptions. So that's what we're using right here. Additionally, in checkout, you will see that there is an asterisk on the required email field. Now, this is not actually required for the terminal to work. This flag is required specifically for form submissions on a normal customer experience. So that would be when you scroll down and click that sign up now button. If you would like this field to be required for the terminal, go to settings and select the require account checkbox. This will make it so that all orders, regardless of type, require an account during checkout, a valid account in the email field. If unchecked, this is an optional field, except when WooCommerce requires accounts for things like subscriptions and virtual downloads. So let's return to checkout, and then we'll go ahead and paste in Jericho's email address. We'll scroll down and click the Arcane Reader 2 button. Now Jericho presents his card for purchasing, and his, the order will go through. In this example, we will not review failures or timeouts. If you would like to see those, please visit the free version video. Again, you can hit escape to cancel the order. Now we're going to wait till this order completes, and then we will take a look at the orders page. Again, performance is going to be based a lot on your Wi-Fi signal or your Ethernet performance. Um, basically, the device will be slower if your Internet is slower, and the order is received. So let's go ahead and take a look at the orders page. So you will shortly see, there you go, that Jericho's order has been placed. It is currently processing, and you can see that the order has his name on it. 
Another great feature of Pro is the ability to process preset orders. This might occur if you're taking orders over the phone and processing them in person, just like reservations or rentals. Simply open the order by clicking on the order number and name. And then once that loads, click the customer payment page link. And that will take you to the checkout page, just like you normally would check out earlier on in this video. So go ahead and click that. And then you'll see as you scroll down that the Stripe Terminal option is there and you will be able to click that button in order to perform a Stripe Terminal checkout on existing accounts receivable. Hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, best of luck with your new in-person transactions.